and action. You like my new clapboard I got? Uh, welcome to another episode of Coffee with Colin. My name is Colin Egglesfield, and it is 11.45 here in Arizona. And I am excited to introduce you guys today to two fabulously, incredibly insightful and uh, inspiring people. As you know, on Coffee with Colin, I'd like to have guests on here who talk about inspiring ways to live a better and healthier life. And today you guys are in for a treat because we have two incredibly uh, insightful and bright-minded people who are going to be sharing with us all about the world of integrative medicine. Now, I think we've been hearing about integrative medicine. It's a buzzword. It's been going around now for a few years. And uh, I, I think a lot of us maybe not may not necessarily know exactly what that means. So we're going to have the experts on here today to share with you what is integrative medicine and how it can benefit you in your life, not just with your physical body, but in mind, body, and spirit. And you, as you know, these are the things that I like to address and talk about uh, and share with my audience. And this is what I share in my Inspire class uh, to help people live better lives. You know, as you guys know, I'm a cancer survivor and uh, at actually testicular cancer two times, had radiation treatment. We're going to be talking about that. And uh, we're going to be talking about not just treatments and talking about cancer and other uh, health issues that people may be dealing with. Uh, we're going to be talking about the root causes of what may be the culprit for why people do end up having cancers and other sorts of health issues manifest in their bodies. I think there's a strong correlation between how we think about the world and ourselves and the issues and the traumas that we deal with. And if we don't deal with these you know, from a mental standpoint and an emotional standpoint, I think we all are aware nowadays that there's a pretty strong correlation between what we think and what we believe and what we experience and how that manifests in its physical form in our human bodies. So that being said, I just want to uh, take a second real quick to thank you guys for being here. Again, your guys' support means everything to the show and to me. And if you have any questions, would love to have you guys join us on the, uh, the chat. So wherever you are coming from, whether it's my Facebook or my YouTube channel, if you're on YouTube, please hit like and subscribe so that you're not missing another episode of Coffee with Colin. And uh, you can also catch us on LinkedIn. So wherever you are at in the metaverse and the internet verse, you guys can catch us and uh, always you can be guaranteed to uh, have some insightful information and an inspiring conversation. And uh, without uh, further ado, ladies and gentlemen, these two incredibly insightful individuals who I'm going to be uh, introduce, introducing here in a second, uh, I just want to leave, uh, read to you a little bit about who they are so you have some context. And uh, Dr. Nick and Dr. Nicole are integrative medicine doctors consulting and coaching influential leaders to their limitless 2.0 lives. Love that. Their mission to create generational change in health, wealth, relationships, family, and freedom is achieved by calibrating the mind, energy, and body to a 2.0 vision aligned with personal values, purpose, and prosperity. Their proprietary process, called the Higher Self Architecture, uniquely applies data-driven testing, concierge integrative medicine, human behavior, and psychoenergetic medicine. All these words are incredibly sexy to me. I love all this stuff. Uh, creating a new normal for the human experience a normal built on synchronization and not sacrifice. So all of that being said, ladies and gents, you guys are in store for an incredibly, uh, again, insightful and eye-opening conversation about health and wellness. So bring your health and wellness questions. We're going to be talking about everything from normal health elements, diabetes and cancer to emotional traumas and all that. So feel free to type in the chat, whatever it is that you'd like me to uh to ask these fine individuals. And with that being said, let's welcome to the stage, if I can figure this out here, Dr. Nick and Dr. Nicole. Welcome to the show, guys. Hi, everyone. <laughs> thanks for having us. It's a pleasure. Thanks for, uh, thanks for being here and sharing your time and expertise on such a, a, uh, an important topic that I think more and more people are starting to hear about in, uh, in, with regards to integrative medicine. So if you guys are okay with it, um, we'd love to just jump right in and uh, ask a little bit about, um, if you could just share a little bit about who you are, what your background is in terms of uh, being doctors, and then uh, we can get into 
some of the stuff that you like to uh, to talk about and some maybe um, some of the uh, success stories that you've helped some of your clients with? Ladies first. Okay. <laughs> we have a special guest. He's going to pop his head. That's <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Pappy. Pappy. And uh, he's very needy right now for some odd reason, but uh, he's our favorite Vishla or my favorite Vishla. Well, dogs um, are always welcome. <laughs> So, you know, Dr. Nick and I, we were joking the other day because we have spent now 16 birthdays together and um, it has been 13 years, 16 years friends, 13 years together. And we have ran a business together for the past 12 and somehow we both have survived. <laughs> I didn't have any gray hair before her. So I think oh, it's yeah. her fault. Just if everyone's not aware, you guys are married, correct? We yes. are, yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> We'd love to talk about working together, being married together, and that dynamic as well, if you guys are open. To we that. love each other every day. We like each other sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's been very interesting because we have always been so different, but we've come together with our skill set to help people and reach that, that 2.0. And Obviously, our focus in the very beginning was all about helping people achieve a higher level of health. But as some people may have experienced in their health journey, they realize that kind of twofold is one, you have poor health, which is now cascading into the other parts of your life. This could be affecting your social life. It's affecting your ability to work, affecting your finances, affecting you know, your family. And we realized that it wasn't just about helping people get their health pack, but it was about the big picture. It, it was about helping people to get their health back, but then have that help them create more balance and more prosperity and more fun in their lives. Because when you get sick, it's heavy and you really lose sight of that. And sometimes it's hard to regain but I will say both Nick and I, we've always been on more of the alternative wellness side of things. Uh, primarily, it just didn't make sense. The approach of use this pill to palliate symptoms. We always were, were big researchers and just like, what is the cause? You know, what, what are the connections when it comes to people getting sick? And we'll get into that a little bit more. But I would say the, the biggest difference between how we're looking at the body and conventional medicine is that, in my personal opinion, I think all of the specialties of gastroenterologists, neurologists, um, urologists, everything being separate, it does a disservice because each specialist doesn't know how everything connects together. And when you can look at how it all pieces together, you can truly help someone foundationally. Mm -hmm. And that's why we've been able to see such great results. Awesome. Yeah, the, the body is a well designed integrated machine. Yeah. And what's wild is that, you know, when we started off, that was our focus, you know, we put a lot of energy onto the nervous system and the biochemistry and all the different aspects that make the body up. But then we realized that like you said, we have a body, we mind, have a mind and a spirit. And that's true integrative, what we call medicine, mm -hmm. is being able to look at how pretty much every single sickness and disease, it's just a feedback mechanism to allow us to be able to perceive that something's not in proper alignment. There's a disconnect. And that disconnect is either coming between the body and the mind or the mind and the spirit. And when we can get the data to be able to see where that initial causation of the break, the cause occurred, well, then we can actually stop that cycle and that pattern from reoccurring. Mm -hmm. And then we go through and use all of, you know, the other great tools to kind of do the patchwork and the healing of the body from the damage that's been done. But I think that's been a huge drawback in a lot of um, practices right now is that we have such a focus on repairing, but not actually stopping that cycle from reoccurring again. Mm -hmm. And so you have uh, your own clinic and obviously clients that you you treat on a regular basis, uh, what would you say most of your clients or is it all come to you for, is it pretty much all across the board with regards to physical, emotional, uh, mental? You can't have one without the other. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> I'll say that we've we've done a big, big transition in the past three years. We were actually a chronic illness practice for the first decade. And we, you know, we called ourselves the resort practice because we were everyone's last resort. And that was something that we really enjoyed for a long period of time because we got to exercise that that researcher. We got to exercise that investigator. And we were so excited to be able to finally figure out what no one else could. Mm -hmm. But in the duration of that time, we realized that chronic illness is not just about the physical body, but as Dr. Nick is saying, it's about the mind. And when we say the spirit, all we mean by that is, is the inspired purpose. And there's a lot of people that have lost track of well, maybe they have never really been aware of who they are at their core. What do they value? What is their inspired purpose? Or they've had a shift in identity of what they should be. Mm -hmm. And and that creates a lot of emotional charges. And that's going to be something that can play a significant role in the physical body. And so when we really started to, to see that part of it, you can't, you can't unsee it. And we realized that there was a certain set of individuals suffering with chronic illness that truly at their core, they wanted to heal. They just didn't know how. And there were some that they weren't willing to work on their mind, which was actually the root cause of their physical symptoms. And so now we still work with complex cases and we work with a lot of people as just their primary care because they've seen such great results and they're just like, I can't go back. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but, you know, overall, I always say this was a hard part about our marketing because it wasn't about just being the gut doctor or the, the brain doctor or the cancer doctor or anything like that. It was we could work with almost any type of condition because we were looking beyond that. We were looking at truly what is at the foundation for this person, which is totally the opposite of conventional medicine. It's like, you have a gut issue, you go to your gastroenterologist. Why would I go somewhere else? <laughs> right. And just so that we're all kind of playing on the same playing field here, what would you say is a, a, a really good working definition of integrative medicine? Oh, we probably have different definitions, but I'll let you go, Nick. <laughs> well, let me tell a story. So years back, uh, when we started into the integrative world, uh, one of our mentors was Dr. Klinghart. He's a Austrian physician and we went to a seminar and he's uh, German actually. I think he grew up in Austria, but he's German. Mm -hmm. And he was um, saying, don't call yourself integrative. If you're not doing emotional work, you're not doing neurological work. You're not doing biochemical work. You're not touching and getting clarity on what's inspiring the person looking at the spiritual aspect of the person. And like through all the stuff and Nicole and I looked at each other like, fuck, we're not integrative. <laughs> like our name's integrative, but we weren't integrative then. Mm -hmm. And it was like a good slap in the face. So, I mean, there's, like you said, it's a buzzword. It's, you know, sounds sexy. Well, it's like psychoenergetic and all those other, you know, quantum <laughs> this and quantum that. Yeah. It's, they're all sexy, but the most people I find today are, you know, integrative is yoga and some bowls. So there's a lot of different concepts of what integration is and, you know, sound therapy can be a very powerful tool to mm -hmm. use, but true integrative medicine is being able to look at everything that makes up the body, both physically, as well as energetically, everything, all the different aspects of the mind, both the mental and the emotional components, and then the different layers of the spiritual bodies. I would say the only thing that I have to add is that, you know, it siloing out health is is also in my mind not integrative because health affects everything so being integrative it is about looking at the physical body and the mind and the emotional state the biochemistry but then also asking those questions about their relationships and their family because if they're super lonely or isolated that can play a significant role in why they're not healing so it's really asking questions that are way beyond blood work and health history and genetics is really what it comes down to. And so would you say, or could you guesstimate what percentage of health 
physical ailments are actually directly related to mental outlook and loneliness and trauma. <laughs> Nick. <laughs> Nick's love. My answer is 99% okay. is the true causation. Wow. Um, the Because energy flows, uh, creation occurs from non-physical to physical. The flow of energy is as above, so below, above, down, <laughs> inside, out. So that above, down, inside, out uh, principle is above from the spirit to the mind into the body. And then that energy from the body gets expressed, you know, from every single cell, it's called bio photons. So bio is life and photons is light. That light emission is what the information they're getting on an MRI scan. It's that's mm -hmm. the radiation being emitted from every single mitochondria from different aspects of our oh. body. I won't geek out too much in that today, mm -hmm. unless you really want to, because that's <laughs> really sexy words we can use. Yeah. But all of that is just the expression of life, the expression of creation. So 99% is there's going to be a disconnect from that mind not being able to serve, be in alignment with our higher self, with our true authentic self. I say the 1% because, yeah, if you're in Hiroshima, you're going to get affected by radiation. Like sure. if you're living next to a landfill, there's going to be off gassing. So there is that 1%, but even 99% of that is how we're able to adapt to those stresses. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And what I would powerful say to that is it's what Dr. Nick is describing is also creating a susceptibility. So it's actually very interesting because if anybody's heard of Dr. Joe Dispenza uh, in one of his books, I'm forgetting which one because I've read all of them, they all mesh together. Uh, but he was talking a lot about the power of the mind and power of suggestibility. And so essentially they were taking different individuals and they were uh, putting them in a a uh, hypnotic state and they were then suggesting certain things but there was only a few that when they put them in that hypnotic state and they pretty much got them to believe that they were warm they were you know in a normal temperature then mm -hmm. immersed them into an ice bath and there was only a few of them that actually their skin was still warm to touch and they were not hyperventilating and experiencing that cold and mm -hmm. so the mind is very powerful. And when the mind becomes weakened due to a chronic stress state or chronic trauma or one event that's a high, high magnitude, then that is going to create more susceptibility in the body. So there's two people sitting, you know, living next to that landfill. One is highly affected by the toxicity of that landfill and the other is less affected. And we can say that some of that is contributed to genes, but genes turn on and off based off of environment. Right. Otherwise known as epigenetics. Exactly. Wow, <laughs> then, <laughs> any point for Colin, right? <laughs> All of sexy words today. Yeah. So yeah. I actually, uh, I have a degree in biology from the University of Iowa. I was planning on going to medical school and- uh, Hawkeyes. Yeah, Hawkeyes. Are you a Hawkeye? I grew up 45 minutes south of there, Burlington. Right. Yeah. Uh, and when I was, you know, going through, I had no idea that Iowa was like a liberal campus. And so my senior year, they had these nurses come in and do a weekend seminar called Therapeutic Touch or Healing Touch. And uh, it was fascinating. It was the first time it just opened up my eyes to this whole world of chakras and the energy meridians that run through our bodies and Eastern philosophies of medicine. And uh, they had this girl lay down on a table and they took out a pendulum and held it over her seven, seven different chakra area points on their body. And the chain started spinning. I was like, that's bullshit. What like <laughs> they're doing that there, you know, it's like, this is all crazy woo woo. And then they broke us up into these groups and we got to experiment with it. And I was like, all right, I'm going to hold my chain like as still as possible over the person that was lying on the, the table. And all of a sudden the thing started spinning. I was like, okay, this is witchcraft. This is like, <laughs> it, it just was, it went against everything that I think we all believe in terms of things, especially health and wellness are black and white. There's a cause and an, and an effect. But I think what we forget or fail or don't realize to, uh, to understand is that on a very uh, deep, quantum physiological level there that cause and effect 
causes that chain to spin. It's not magic. It's not scary. It's not woo woo. And even like the crystals that we have, you know, I just understanding some of the stuff, I started to realize that everything has a certain energetic frequency mm -hmm. and this stuff can be scientifically measured. And even like when I talk about these crystals on my Instagram lives, um, the question of this sort of, you know, belief in certain things comes to butt up against what we traditionally think is the way to do things, whether that's Western medicine, religion, and people say like, Colin, you don't need crystals, you need Jesus. And it's like, okay, let's just take a, just kind of a, a, a deeper look at all of this, where all of this, I think we're all talking about the same thing in terms of how things cause other things to happen. I think it's just important that we look at the deeper, maybe quantum level, like you were talking about with Dr. Joe Dispenza. And it's, uh, he's amazing. I'm actually listening to his book, um, forgetting the, or breaking the habit of being, of being yourself. Yeah. Being yourself. yeah. <laughs> and he just talks about all this on a very quantum level, uh, who we are energetically as beings. And from the, once we get down to that level, we can start to really consciously put in place and design who we want to be as that self-identity 2.0. And Dr. Nick, like you were talking about, in connection to your soul. Yep. Um, so when you're meeting with your clients, um, do you actually start to talk like when they first come in and they're saying, okay, I have diabetes or mm -hmm. I've got, you know, uh, asthma or whatever it is. What does it look like when your patients first come in to see you? What does that initial like conversation look like? Well, they don't start with me because I get too weird and too deep right away. So they start <laughs> with people. You know, I'm going to comment on that, but it, it's funny as you were talking, it made me think of we're very real and raw with all of our clients. And, you know, in especially a couple of years ago before people knew us as well as they do now, you know, I'm like, listen, I didn't want to be the weird doctor. I swear it would have been so much easier to not be the weird doctor. <laughs> like, but it's the same for you. The reason why you've learned about Dr. Demartini and you've learned about Dispenza is because you're always seeking for the void that exists. You're always looking for the next set of information or, or the next set of tools to take your life up another notch. And that was happening a lot in the first 10 years of our practice is, you know, you just see certain people get better and certain people didn't. And, you know, you're just like, okay, well, it can't just be about this process or, or their diligence or their commitment. Like there's something more to the story here. And that's really what kept us seeking and searching and then understanding that there was this whole other world of, of human behavior, of the mind, of living an inspired life, of, of quantum energy. And so, and everyone is different in their journey. So kind of speaking to that, you know, that initial meeting is, well, first, I am very real and raw and you either like my personality or you don't, but usually they know what they're getting themselves into. And, you know, everyone, what everyone's experiencing is very real, you know, because, you know, if you have diabetes, that is very real. Like you have pancreatic issues. But my job is to ask really, really good questions to get you thinking about things you've never thought about. And then for me to have a hypothesis that is about 99% correct on knowing what's going on with you. And then after that, when I run all of my data points, it either confirms or denies my hypothesis and most of the time confirms. Can you share what a couple of these questions look like? <laughs> I'm laughing because... I have trained many physicians, um, some of them that worked in my office and, and many other uh, physicians that I did teaching through different supplement companies and things like that. And uh, <laughs> the first thing that I would teach these physicians is that everyone's a fucking liar. <laughs> and she, they're like, <gasps> everyone's face is completely and utterly horrified. And I'm like, OK, OK, I, that was my icebreaker. But let me tell you why. And. I would just proceed to explain is that people don't know what they don't know. And, you know, there are many people, and this is based off of our environment, our society is they'll say, I eat really healthy, 
but they might be eating the Atkins diet with all of the Atkins products that have tons of uh, preservatives and artificial sugars and you know stabilizers in it. But in their minds, they're like, I used to eat fast food. Now I do this. This is good. This is healthy. So you have to ask better questions. And then also, you know, simple things is like I dig and I will ask the same question multiple times or multiple ways. I'll have someone say, uh, have you ever had a head injury? Oh, no, 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 absolutely not. I'm like, you kind of answered that so quick. You didn't even have a minute to think. Do you have any scars mm -hmm. on your head? Oh, gosh, yeah, I forgot. I have this scar right here. I was hit with a bat when I was playing baseball. And I'm like, oh, well, <laughs> that, that is a head injury. So let's uh, let's proceed. <laughs> So it's really just digging. We go all the way back to when they were born, childhood, breastfed, you know, ailments as a kid, you know, drugs that were used, even if you were five years old, you know, we, we dig. It, it takes us a good 75 minutes to get through all of the questions. Okay. But it's amazing because people will say, oh, I've had this pain and it's been there and I don't know why it came out of nowhere. And a lot of times by the end of that consult, they're like, wow, you really made me think like I had no idea that that and that could be connected. And that's really a beautiful thing because that simple acknowledgement that that new piece of information mm -hmm. is one thing. That's one step in their healing process. Makes sense. And it's fun because I don't really enjoy that piece, but I love all of her notes on that aspect. <laughs> and I'll go through a lot of like the psychosomatic aspects. So like going through and looking at, you know, they, they moved, you know, at this age and then they had some injuries following after the move and it was all on this side of the body. And then a couple of months later they got diagnosed and the affected this organ and being able to energy is all polarized. It's all just has a, an aspect of a positive negative charge. So actually getting back to kind of what you were talking about, like with cancer and going back into the quantum, the non-physical, all energy is literally transmuted from that non-physical, the quantum into the physical Newtonian physics. And the expression that occurs in the Newtonian physics is actually dictated by the charge, the vibration, the frequency, as like Tesla would talk about. Mm -hmm. But when we come to health, overall, globally, there is a right spin of energy. And when the polarization of that electron field actually changes, and it gets actually deeper than electrons into the qubits, but to keep it simple, that electron cloud, that field mm -hmm. actually decreases the polarization, the energy of it, soon as that hits a threshold, the actually right spin goes and starts spinning left. And that left spin affects the oxygen level. And the oxygen mm. level, as we know, cancer is what? Does it thrive in oxygen? No. Mm. Most of the really, really bad diseases we think about don't involve oxygen, which is connected to a decreased electrical charge. Okay. So a lot of it is going back to figuring out, okay, was there one thing? Was there multiple events? Like what actually created the decrease of charge, which actually affected the physical state of that tissue. Mm -hmm. And when you look at the events that Dr. Nicole constantly digs up and you look at, cause like Eastern medicine, you know, that's broad how they go over it. But every single organ system, right side, left side, masculine, feminine, going through connecting all the pieces of the puzzle together creates a story and mm -hmm. energy is always in a state of balance. Like that's one of the beautiful aspects of the creation Einstein talks about for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. Mm -hmm. So if there is a degree of positive charge of quote unquote, what we perceive as good, there's an equal and opposite bad. If there's a level of happiness, there's a level of sadness. Mm -hmm the mind becomes imbalanced and it becomes attached to either the good or the bad. And as Buddha talks about all of our sufferings connected to our attachments, our mm -hmm. attachments is the foundational aspect, which creates the disconnect. So when we can be able to see when the mind became split out of love and into this duality, mm -hmm. that that is the part of figuring out how to get the mind back into a state of equanimity, into a state of balance. 
that collapses that trauma, that pattern from reoccurring, but also going back into that kind of like quantum jumping back into that moment and you balance the perception in that moment, well, then that causation isn't there. So then the charge goes back to its normal state. And then the body can do what it naturally wants to do is heal, to thrive. Mm -hmm. And then you give the nutrients, you give even things like red light therapy to be able to give more energy into the cells and the tissue so they can heal. But it can't heal if the foundation of the spin isn't going to allow it to accept. Got it. Yeah, makes sense. It's like trying to plant a seed in unfertile soil. And obviously, if you're, uh, you know, smoking, drinking, doing things or inhaling toxicity from the air and feeding your body with these chemicals that the even the FDA approves as, quote unquote, healthy, yeah. Uh, and knowing that in Europe, there's like 2000, over 2000 chemicals that are banned that yeah. we actually allow in our food supply and our makeups and everything here in America. Um, it's no wonder that we have the rates of like autism and cancers and all this stuff are skyrocketing. But even though all of these rates of disease are skyrocketing, we still like to eat our cheeseburgers and our hot dogs and, and uh, our lucky charms because there's a, the, the marketing machine of the food industry is so powerful in the bright colors and the yeah. uh, associations of, they know how to tap into our subconscious uh, belief systems about what is healthy and what is good. And so a bright red Skittle is going to look healthy, even though it's filled with titanium dioxide, which is obviously known to be a neuro disruptor. So how do we, as a society, and it sounds like, I mean, this is a, I, I love this conversation, but most people, um, you know, I would say it's, it's this kind of stuff is like, how do we share this to the masses? How do we create more awareness and get the FDA and even doctors to be aware of this stuff? Because most doctors aren't trained this in medical schools. And I, I, I read this, I'm not sure if it's true, but a lot of medical school curriculums, medical schools get funding from drug companies. Mm -hmm. And so it's this, this loop of uh, creating people to be sick so that we can then feed them drugs. And uh, it's like this, the health industry is so massive and huge um, that I think most people are just like, well, I'm just a one individual, how could I possibly know what to do in all of this? And is it going to be expensive? And can I afford it? Mm -hmm. um, it just seems so overwhelming that I feel like, where do you begin with, with all of this, this stuff? Because what you're talking about is, is, I believe, and not that I believe it, but it, you see it, the science is there. It's so how do we spread this awareness to the masses? Um, so that people who come supposedly come up with the cure for cancer are like silenced and killed and put in jail. I mean, is there a cure for cancer? I mean, are, is this stuff out there and are people trying to suppress it from the, the I, I think that the thing that it comes down to after doing this for so long is that one, the body is so miraculously resilient mm -hmm. and the exactly what you're saying, the key to a healthier world is actually getting back to the basics. You know, we live, especially in the US, it's all about the next best thing, the new yeah. genetic therapy, the next drug, the next cancer cure. But everything that you just said is all of the micro catalysts to the disease, the, the Skittles, the antibiotics, the painkillers, the Oh, you got injured. Uh, just use a couple painkillers for a little while and then it'll go away. It's the don't look until there's an emergency. And mm. the thing that I say to people is you don't know what you don't know. But before you even get there, what you need to sit back and think about is how much have you settled for and how much have you normalized? Because mm. Right now, eating Skittles is normal and eating McDonald's is, is normal. When people go and eat healthier, 
they have the majority of people around them saying, when are you going to eat normal again? And that's a perception. It's a very screwed up perception. But it's also what we've normalized is bad sleep is normal. Gut issues are normal. Headaches here and there are normal. Kids having developmental disorders is normal. Like ask any teacher. The majority of these schools need aids and assistance in all of the classrooms. There are so many programs for kids that have that are, are autistic or Asperger's or have other types of learning issues. It wasn't always like this, but we this is becoming the normal. Mm-hmm. And as a society, as a world, we need to stop normalizing this. We need to have a higher expectation on what our human experience is. We need to stop thinking that life is just stressful. Life is just filled with obstacles. Life is just hard. And it's okay to be stressed out. It's okay to hate your job. It's okay to have poor health because someone's going to save you. We are in the driver's seat of every decision that we make. And it's about empowering yourself with more tools. And that is one of the reasons why all three of us are here right now, because we hit obstacles and we said, I'm not going to let this take me down. I'm going to figure out how to get past this. And you acquire more and more intellectual property. I know I sure as hell have had to hire experts that knew more about something that I didn't. But now I would say Dr. Nick and I really try to be that in the health arena for other people because i don't fear health like you could tell me that you have the most insane diagnosis and i'm like you're good as long as we get to do our work we have the tools to one figure it out and number two help you facilitate your healing like not scared of that at all there are a majority of people that live in fear of their health because they don't they don't know they don't have tools they don't have data They feel like garbage and they get told, your blood looks normal. Come back and we'll see if something bad is happening in a year. Like what kind of mindset is that? Yeah, I when I went to go get my cholesterol checked, I was in Los Angeles and my doctor did the blood test and I got a phone call and it was a voicemail. Hi Colin, this is Dr. So-and-so. Your cholesterol is elevated. I'm prescribing you Lipitor you can go pick it up at your pharmacy. End of story. That was it. <laughs> there was no like, what are you eating? What's yeah. your stress level? And I, I was like, all right, he's the doctor. So I went to go take it. And I, you know, I, I took it for a week, headaches, mm-hmm. muscle cramps, uh, brain fog. I was like, oh, and I started Googling this stuff. And I'm like, this is freaking crazy. Cause it's like preventing your body from having the fat it needs to have the electrical impulse from your neurons to actually fu- actually function properly. Yeah. And doctor never explained that to me. So this is what's broken with our, with our system. And the best part of that is if you look at the statistics of how many people have high cholesterol right now and how many people are on statins and that the root of cholesterol issues is liver dysfunction. And in the past 13 years that we have been running tests, blood tests on our patients, we have had 90% of our patients, which are in the thousands now, come back with autoimmune liver conditions. They don't, doctors don't test for that. So autoimmune attacks on the liver of the majority of the population. So what does that mean? Is that from eating foods or what? So your liver is your giant is a giant filter. It's right. what filters out all those chemicals that you were talking about from Skittles, titanium dioxide, all the chemicals in personal products, the heavy metals that are unfortunately in tap water, the pesticides that are on the majority of the farmed foods. These are things that our body, don't get me wrong, is equipped to filter out. But the way that I describe it in very, very simple terms is your liver is like a giant vacuum filter. So you go, you buy the best vacuum on the market, you drop your like $700 on your Dyson. And now you're one weekend and you've been using that vacuum over and over. And now the vacuum isn't working. But logically, you're just like, oh, it's nothing wrong with the motor. It's just the filter's full. So you go, you dump the filter and you're, you're back to square one. Your vacuum works fine. So it's the same concept with your liver is that 
your liver is, it's a compounding effect of all the crap you've been exposed to since you were literally born. Literally, <laughs> people don't realize that's when it starts. And your liver has been filtering, 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 and now it's at its max capacity. And now you might have something as significant as fatty liver. You have gut issues because your liver is connected to your gut. You might have pancreatic issues because your liver is connected to your pancreas. You might have ingestion, heartburn, because it's connected to your small intestine and stomach. And you might have cholesterol issues. You might have neurological issues. Your liver literally plays a role in almost every organ in your entire body. So if that organ gets overloaded, mm -hmm. you're going to have a whole slew of different issues. And what's scary is that nowadays we are seeing children that their livers all are already at max capacity because they are being bombarded. And this isn't even just them, but moms are being bombarded with chemicals while they're pregnant. You know, the series of, of different shots and medications that women are being recommended to take while they're pregnant. Obviously they're not being told like, don't eat X, Y, or Z. And then, you know, and even just the, the simple uh, procedures in a hospital of the bath that they give your child with all of the antiseptics that wipes all the good bacteria off their body, screws oh, yeah. up their microbiome. Like it's so loaded, yeah. but overall, you know, there is a reason for any health dysfunction. It's just mm -hmm. a matter of doing better testing to determine what is the cause of it. I want to go back and answer your question on how do we resolve this big global issue. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that I've learned from taking a step back and especially being fascinated with energy is realizing that different cultures um, use different tools. Like you said, we have Eastern cultures that focus on meridians and chakras here in the U S we're big in, you know, biochemistry, pharmaceuticals, even the natural side of it, it's still all supplements and herbs for the most part. Then you go over and you see like Germany and Austria and they're using homeopathics um, for a lot of their uh, elements. So it, it shows us that when you look, go back to Bruce Lipton and you look at epigenetics, that the environment is a big portion of dictating the expression of who we are. And that's, I mean, that's what Einstein taught is the field dictates the expression of the particle. So that field of energy, when we look at it, that's, that's the controller of whatever country, the government. So the government is setting that standard of energy. So the only way to make a big change is to change the governing system throughout it. And that's bombarded, like going through. I think the only way to overcome that is to reprogram. And this is what we were talking about with, you know, children being affected today mm -hmm. is that they know, they know this, you know, it's kind of shitty to call it out, but it's like our children are being a huge project of mental warfare right now. And we see that with all the social media, we see that the programming of ads, we see that how they're being targeted for so many different things that's happening in the past couple of years. If we don't take control over the children's minds and help them have a balanced perspective so that they can be empowered and make decisions for themselves instead of being programmed to take Comply. specific actions, that this process is only going to get worse. Mm -hmm. On the nice side of energy is that if it does get worse, we'll hit that threshold until it became the pain becomes so great that it will reverse engineer itself. So we'll get there eventually, you know, but it can either be coming from the conscious mind for us mm -hmm. to not continue to go so low. And if we don't learn the lesson, use that consciousness to go from our reptilian hind mind into our executive center to start serving ourselves. Well, then we're going to have to go deeper and lower and deeper and lower until we hit that threshold and say, fuck it, I can't do it anymore. Yeah. And then start serving ourselves. Yeah. Unfortunately, most of the time we don't start seeking answers and, and making changes until you've got that diagnosis of you have cancer, which, yep. you know, as I mentioned to you guys, 18 years ago, I was diagnosed with testicular cancer and 
had the surgery and then did radiation treatment. And that, you know, is pretty fairly common in men. But what's not common is a year later when I was going for my checkup, they diagnosed that it was now on the other side. So I had to have that one removed. And that only happens 5%, I guess, 5% of testicular cancer cases. So before we jumped on here, you guys were mentioning how there's an underlying something is is the culprit for- Which side did it start in? Uh, the left side. And wow, this is amazing. Does that matter? Yes. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> everything. Every, there's no mistakes in the world. That's that's what's crazy. So I didn't I didn't finish one of my statements. Um, my mind is a crazy place to be. It's like a piece of candy all over the place. But so that balance of energy, energy is when you look at it, it's a wavelength. That sine wave that yeah. we've probably all seen. That's two dimensional. So if you take that sine wave and then you rotate it in 360 degrees, that's a sine wave is in time but every single issue creates in a specific moment in time. So when you take that sine wave, it looks like this and you look at it actually in a certain moment, it becomes a circle. That circle is two dimensional. So in a three dimensional aspect, that's actually a sphere. Yep. The sphere is what holds all of the energy of life, which is in a constant state of balance. Our magnetic field, hence what the MRI is taking information from our aura, when you think about it in the woo woo, kind of witchcraft state. I love when you said witchcraft because people are called witches because we didn't understand the actual science to explain exactly. yeah. all this, you know, mystic. Like 200 years ago, you guys would probably be burned at the stake. Oh, oh God, yeah. yeah. It's, it's, that's what's I'm crazy. still hoping I go deep enough that I still get burned. <laughs> <laughs> Not really, but <clears throat> the that ball of energy, our field is the the micro aspect of energy the macros above us as above so below so that micro energy is always in a state of balance so that means if we have an area of polarization a charge that has a great negative energy to it it has to have a balance of energy of greater positive charge okay and all of that energy is balanced geopositionally so to keep it simple and just a one-to-one -one difference if I have right on my left side, that negative charge, I would have to have a one or equal positive charge to balance myself out on the same level. If it wouldn't be here to here, because then the right one would be actually down the counterbalance, north and south pole, the X, Y, and Z axis. Mm -hmm. Nicole's probably is like, shut up. You're getting way too deep here. <laughs> no, but, I love that. But you have to. I'm like, rein it in, Nick. <laughs> <laughs> when you look at, let's say, testicular cancer, it's like, so you have an imbalanced charge there. You have to figure out where the other equal and opposite imbalanced charges to be able to work on that too, because that's only half of the puzzle. We get, we get blindsided thinking that, oh shit, that's the fucking problem. That's half the problem. That's not yeah. the entire problem. That's the problem that showed itself the tip of the iceberg, but there's more to the iceberg. And if we don't realize that we don't have the awareness, then we can't actually <laughs> help the problem. So we need to increase our awareness and understanding of what actually is. And part of that is going outside of that Newtonian physics and starting to learn quantum. Mm -hmm. You can't just live in the quantum because we're also Newtonian. Right. So we have to be balanced. We have to be able to use both sides of physics. We have to energy is bi-directional. We have to, like you said, we can't, we can't just be all energetic and then eat fast food because that fast right. food is going to affect the energetic. Yeah. It, it, we need to have a balanced understanding and to use all those tools. So, yeah. And I think it's also though, like looking at uh, all of those layers, like, you know, Dr. Are Nick, you pregnant? One... Cause Pappy is just like ridiculous. <laughs> like he's only acted like this once before. Question, I'm like, Nick. I'm like, uh Oh no, <laughs> I'm not. Anyway. <laughs> I told you we were raw. You know, we're, we're not very shy. You know, when it, I think one of the cool things about what Dr. Nick has created that he hasn't even mentioned is he actually created a way to quantify 
and test for these energetic blockages that are showing up in different organs and tissues. Um, and it was actually using uh, a type of quantum testing. And so he created this technique. So what's kind of fascinating is when we go, we piece together the biochemical, we do the blood work, we do the urine testing, we do all of that. But right. then we also look at the mental, the emotional, and the energetic things that are creating that specific disease or, or symptom. And so one of the interesting things, even about the like reproductive system, prostate area for men is, you know, men are not symptomatic when they have different types of bacterial infections, like UTIs, essentially. Women are symptomatic. They're in a lot of pain. They're having frequent urination. And so majority of the time, men are not being screened through just simple urine tests. And I've actually worked with a couple of men that had different issues, either in the prostate or testicular area, and they showed up that they had some very specific bacterial um, issues that were showing up there. But the reason why the bacteria was trapped was actually because they had scar tissue from an old low back injury or a tailbone injury, things like that. So it's just a matter of even simple tests that exist through your, you know, your conventional labs that can give you so much more information. And then on top of it is that when you look at the reproductive um, system, as well as the urinary system, if you were to look anatomically, it's actually right correlated with your gastrointestinal system. So if someone also has dysbiosis or they have bad bacteria, let's say in their colon or their um, large intestine, they could easily have that cascading into the dog is like being crazy right now. <laughs> you could easily have that cascade into um, the lymph nodes, which then will get picked up by the bladder or get picked up by the prostate, which then will affect those other areas. So yeah. there's just so many interesting things to investigate that could be brewing in the background associated mm -hmm. with those conditions. So it sounds like obviously the, the gut uh, your gut issues and, and the health and even our mental uh, acuity and our mental outlook and, and our, our just our outlook on life in terms from a mental standpoint, you know, talking about depression. Uh, I've been reading a lot now that, our gut has a, a huge influence on our mental awareness and, and our mood and that sort of thing. So just, you know, we're talking very micro level here and a lot about energy and stuff, but on a practical level for people, you know, listening in, uh, maybe some, some helpful takeaways for our audience now to take this information. We've obviously now identified some of the issues and the problems. What's some practical advice that you could share with our audience to start being able to uh, reverse or course correct or change the spin of the electrons so that we are more in alignment to, uh, to, to avoid some of these health issues. Nicole and I, we have our Monday meeting and we walk during it every single time. And um, today I asked her the question knowing that she knew the answer, but I was like, What's the number one thing someone can do to increase their energy level? Do you want me to answer the question? Yes. <laughs> well, this is actually piggybacking off of the last podcast that we did with Colin is to get really clear on who you are at your core and what's most important to you. And so if you can be aware of who you are at your core, your core values, and you can make an effort every day to exercise embracing those values, you are going to be ahead of the majority of, of people in the world from a mental, emotional, vibrational state. And so Every... it's taking the time to figure that out though, which a lot of people haven't taken that time. I was going to say every single thought, decision, and action is either building us up or breaking us down. It's either giving us more energy or stealing it away because energy is not stagnant. So the highest productive action one can take is congruent and in alignment with our highest values. So when, when someone gets crystal clear on what's most important to them, and then they dedicate their life to serve those highest values, mm -hmm. they're going to be full of energy. And that full of energy is going to constantly give them that right spin, making their body more adaptable. So if they are, you know, unfortunately, by that landfill, they're not going to be affected by it. 
-hmm. So life is, was all, you know, about being able to adapt because those attachments, like Buddha said, those attachments going to create our suffering. Yep. So we need to be able to adapt physically, but the only way we can truly adapt physically is by having an adaptive mindset. I also think it's a matter of taking feedback from your body and your mind, because a lot of us are, are avoiding that feedback because it might seem bad or it might seem scary. Like, oh, I have a symptom and it comes and it goes. So either I'm just gonna kind of normalize that or brush it to the side or, oh gosh, what if this is something serious? I don't wanna know, I'm not ready for that. And really the feedback is there to say, hey, investigate it. It's probably no big deal, but you have an opportunity to make it better. And so if that is going and getting a better quality blood test or some type of diagnostic testing that gives you more information than your basic physical, and or if that is that fear coming up, hey, what are you? Why are you here? What are you telling me? <laughs> you know, okay. is this is this a value? Is are you trying to is this a reoccurring cycle? Or are you trying to, you know, guide me away from something that is going to, you know, not be a great decision. And that that becomes a little bit easier when you you understand your values, because you make decisions in alignment with your values. Mm -hmm. And you, you're more aware of where to say yes, and where to say no. Yep. And a lot of people don't have that compass. And this is where, I mean, we're speaking the same language because I created this course called Inspire. And uh, I've been doing this 90 day manifest Inspire class. We started it last week and it is, and I've been doing my Inspire class for now for the past three years. And it is all based on identifying what your core values are. And what I discovered roughly 10 years ago, you know, when I was in Hollywood, my, I was geared all towards becoming a professional actor. And I was geared towards just wanting to be successful and, you know, obviously working and, and being uh, in that world of professional acting. And once I got to that certain level of, you know, working with a bunch of A-list actors and going to all the Hollywood Beverly Hills parties and that sort of thing, I got to that place and I realized there was, it was, it just felt empty. It felt like there was still something missing in terms of a fulfillment level, which set me on this trajectory of like, you know, I think we all think that once we have something, it's going to make us feel better. You know, once we have the more money or if we have the great job or the great relationship, it's all this outward type of achievement that we think is going to create that fulfillment. And what I realized once I got it, I was like, oh, there's, there's something missing. So mm -hmm. I started to go on this journey to try to discover inwardly what you know, who I really was and what my core values were. And so this is what I helped do in my Inspired uh, course is get clarity on who you really are. Because a lot of the times when you talk about what are our core values, we may have and we may, may not realize it like people pleasing as a mm -hmm. core value. And that in itself is you may think that you're doing something good for people. So it may make you feel like you're being filled up with pleasing other people. But in the long run, what that does is it energetically uh, puts you on this hamster wheel of having that attachment to I am a good person or I am useful if I only if I am helping other people and making them feel better, which is there's there's a, a positive energy to that. But energetically, if you don't get the feedback or the response that, hey, thank you, you're great, thank you for that. If we don't constantly get that feedback, we can start to feel like we're not appreciated, uh, that we um, we keep needing to do more in order to feel that fulfillment. And so what I do in this course is I help you identify the core values that, are, like you were saying, Dr. Nick, that are connected to who you are spiritually. So I'd like to just hear, uh, if I could, from you when you are helping people identify what their core values are, what does that look like? Nicole and I do it very similar, slightly different because she's a master of questions and I'm more of a master of just feeling into energy. Um, so we both have different kind of tools that we use to get there. 
but it, it is really, it's first off of understanding where our values come from and our values are created primarily by our voids. You know, we want to fill our life up, but you can't fill your life up with something that you don't perceive as missing. So you want to fill your life up with something that has been perceived as missing. And from that, our voids are the primary dictators that create our, our values. And then from there, it's about, I always give the analogy of like, we have a bullseye and we want to be able to get as specific as possible in the middle of that bullseye. And that's like where, you know, you could say like people pleasing. That's like, okay, well, what are you trying to get out of people pleasing? What do you truly get from that? Mm -hmm. And th the people pleasing is a tool that they've found that's actually been beneficial for them to get what they really want. And, you know, let's just say that person was me and I was like people pleasing, like I wanted that deep connection and I got a deep connection from people pleasing, like deep connection is a high value for me. And I thought it was people pleasing, but people pleasing isn't a high value. It's just something that I found that actually gave me what's truly valuable to me, mm -hmm. deep connection. Yeah. So you have to ask, cause if you said it was deep connection and then I got outside of that, well, I'm going to miss the bullseye. But if I get deep connection, and I'm slightly off of that. I'm still going to hit the bullseye every single time. Mm -hmm. So it's about getting to the very deep specifics and knowing like once you get it, you get this warm sensation in your heart and you feel inspired. Hence the inspired class. Yes. Yes, exactly. Yes. Yeah. It's um, kind of funny with values. I, I did a lot more values work with companies because I, I coach other healthpreneurs and, um, so many of the times they were struggling to figure out the core values of the company. And I was like, okay, I'm going to reverse engineer this. So it's kind of similar to what Dr. Nick's saying. I was like, what pisses you off the most in your company? Like the things that people do that just like you go home and you are like telling everybody like, I can't believe this happened. They did that. They acted that way. And then I was able to reverse engineer and help them understand that their core values of their company shape the culture of their business. And really get specific on that. And I, I started translating some of these same concepts into working with the individual. But one of the questions that I love to ask is what makes you unique that either people love you or hate you? And, mm -hmm. you know, and, and really it's just, you know, it could be, um, I, you know, I speak up no matter what I speak for what I stand for, what I believe in. And, you know, there's going to be certain people that are going to really commend you for that behavior. And then there's going to be others that are just like, you are not for me. And, um, once you're able to decipher how these unique traits play a role in who they are at their core, uh, it really sets them free from, people that might judge them or not like them um, mm -hmm. because now they understand that I know who I am at my core and I know that I'm going to have my people and I'm going to have other people that are not, not into it. And that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. And what I've discovered is the only way in which when you're going into actors, going to auditions, the, when I was first auditioning, I realized my main attachment was, I hope they like me. I hope they like me enough to book me for this job. And what happened and what I realized was until uh, it wasn't until I started to get on the other side of the camera, when I saw actors coming in and watching auditions from the other side of the table, I realized it was the actors that came in having a strong identity of who they were because then we knew exactly what, what that character or what that person was all about, which allowed us then to say, okay, that is a specific core identity or character. We know what it is. Is it right for this role? No, but now we know who they are. So if another role comes up, we know how to cast them. When the other, when people would come in with that, you know, were that right character, we would say, okay, we know who this is. So we're going to cast them. But when you walk into a room and this doesn't just, this isn't just for auditions, it's for your whole life. When you walk into the room, not connected to who your core, unique, authentic core identity is, no one knows who the fuck you are. <laughs> and it's like, you may, people may think you're nice and they're like, yeah, but to have these deep, authentic, real connections with people, you've got to 
connect to that core authentic self-identity of who you are. And like you said, you're going to find your tribe. Some people are not going to like you. Some people are going to be like, hey, you know, not my cup of tea, but that's okay. Cause the name of the game is finding your tribe and finding the people that vibrate with that same frequency that you do. That is what is going to create those deeper connections that are really going to sustain us long-term. I mean, I mean, when you look at movies, like most of the time, actors and actresses, they're playing in a very similar role because they have their values and they're very confident in those values and they can express those values through the characters. Very few times I, and I am very ignorant on actors and actresses. <laughs> like I could meet somebody famous and I would have no clue. Um, <laughs> because I just realized I'm like, Oh, that's probably actually the right answer to like my favorite actor. I'm like, I don't know his name though. Um, oh my God. <laughs> because he, he was able to, play the values of the role. Yep. He wasn't bringing himself. He would lose himself into the value of the character. Mm -hmm. And like that, like when I watched him, like these different movies and he's a completely different person in it yep. because he was playing the values of the character, not his values. Yep. And I was just like, my mind was blown. What God, what's his name? He, he gets like over 20 million a movie now. Like he's, <laughs> he's big into, um, DiCaprio. Yeah. Leonardo. Okay. How do you not yeah. know who that is? I told you, like, this is not my forte. Like, I don't do these things. Oh, yeah. Like, okay. I travel and read in the quantum. I'm not watching. <laughs> that movies. is true. <laughs> oh, Those are the hardest goodness. questions you asked me, like movies. And I was like, gosh, oh, shit. That's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> but yeah, no, it's interesting because when when people, when as actors, we, we want to. And, and this is a, a topic for a whole, we could talk about this, losing yourself in a role. And some people say, well, you're an actor. Like, you know, how do I know that you're not playing a character right now? And, and, and all that sort of yeah. thing. But with regards to losing yourself in a role or becoming that self-identity, um, on a very deep quantum level, when we see with, uh, people who have split personality disorder, where they, uh, on a very deep, core level, they are these different personalities. Jim Carrey, oh, James wow. Carrey. Yeah. So yes. much so that yeah. I've read, I read this, uh, uh, about this one person who had 10 different personalities and all of them were allergic to nuts except for one of the personalities. And so the, when the person was the one personality, they could eat nuts and not have an allergic reaction or different. I've uh, got suggestibility. And, and, <laughs> Uh, split personality disorder where the color of the eyes of the different personalities would actually change when they were this different personality of one of the split personality types. It's just fascinating to me. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Look up a uh, cymatics and that will probably help understand a little bit of the change of the eye color. Cymatics. Okay. Um, for our viewers, and I know we're, we're approaching the uh, the end of the interview here, but I, I feel like we could I could ask you questions for like four more hours. Um, but just to respect your time and our audience's time, um, just some takeaways for you know we talked about connecting to your core value as a as a foundation for getting healthier. From there, especially people who may be dealing with health issues like cancer currently, or diabetes, or other you know issues what advice would you give to them uh, other than reaching out to you? And obviously I would encourage everyone to reach out to you guys. Cause I would, and I'm going to be talking to you guys after this as well. Cause I um, am dealing with some stuff as well, but uh, from here, what practical information or insight could you share with your, our audience about uh, uh, building from that identifying with your values? And then from there, where do we go? For me, I would just say there's always an answer. And this is not about bad family history. This is not about bad genetics. If you were listening the whole time, you probably heard us talk about the epigenetics and how genes will turn on and off based off of your environment, but also based off of the health and well being of, of your mind. If you are living in chronic stress and 
you feel like, you know, the world is, is falling down on you, you're going to have different symptoms. So it's a matter of having a practitioner that can bridge the world of helping to get to know you, get to understand the things that you might be dealing with from that mental, emotional perspective, and how to meet you in the middle of navigating that and and not you know forcing you in oh you need talk therapy or you need this or you need that maybe it's a matter of getting that clarity understanding your core values mm -hmm. and then it's also really a matter of getting better data because the the average data that you're getting from your basic blood work it is not good enough it is not giving you the best information and also, too, you know, even in the functional medicine world, which functional medicine gets confusing between functional integrative and functional is doctors that are leveraging these better tests. But when you think about it, if you go to a functional medicine doctor, they might run a urine test, a, a saliva sample, they might run a stool sample. And so they're going to get all these data points, but it's still all focused on biochemistry. It's not looking at your neurology. It's not looking at your mental and emotional state. So you need to look for that integrative approach of someone who's really considering all parts of you and giving you something that is also easy to implement for your life. You know, we work really, really well with busy families, busy entrepreneurs, and it's because we are those people. <laughs> and we've also created a way that we literally ship equipment to your house and you use it on your own terms while you're working from home or while you're home from work. And it is something that works really well for our people because it's designed for these busy professionals that they they want to heal, but they want to heal because they want to do all the other things that are important to them. Yeah. And so I think that that's a big part is that we have to we have to create a sustainability with health and wellness. This shouldn't be about go to this insane extreme to heal for three right. months. Right. And then it's not sustainable at all. And now you just go backwards. And in the interim, you didn't even really learn anything. You didn't really learn anything about how can I make this more sustainable? Mm -hmm. You know, this isn't also about, you know, oh, positive thinking. It, it, like, this is about how do you train your mind to just be even one micro step more balanced. So I think that's really the key to all of this is I always say it's not about what you do. It's about how you do it. And if you can leverage this a strategy that creates sustainability, that's where the magic happens. How about you, Dr. Nick? I mean, it's hard to, uh, to go beyond that without getting too much detail. <laughs> if you say... talk about bio photons one more time. <laughs> <laughs> guess for, for someone who may be dealing with cancer currently or something. I mean, so elements. two foundational things to look at. So I always look at the body as a battery. It's just energy. Mm -hmm. um, and a battery has a negative charge and a positive charge. But what's interesting about a battery is that it's just sitting there potential energy until we can connect that negative and positive charge together. So sickness is an imbalance of charge, too much negative or too much positive, too much or too little, you know, that's sickness out of homeostasis. So the goal of health is to get back into that state of balance, back into that state of equity, equanimity. Mm -hmm. And when looking at the body as a battery, one of the first things we want to do is to treat it like a battery. So we want to make sure that the elements inside of it actually can have the ability to conduct. So you want some good quality, um, you know, we have specific brands that we like, but we test everything, but you want some really good trace minerals, you know, to keep it simple, some electrolytes, some good quality electrolytes, um, just like a battery, you know, it's, it's got salt water inside of it. Mm -hmm. um, a car battery. So you, you want a good, you want your body to be able to use the charge. And from there, it's like, you want to give it energy. So an easy thing is a red light, you know, you want to allow the body to receive that energy to be able to use it to heal <laughs> at the same time that we're kind of putting the foot on the gas. We want to take our foot off the brake. So you want to detox, you know, with detoxing, one of our favorite thing is infrared saunas. Infrared heats up you it's like the sun from the inside out. So it's going to be more of a lymphatic detox 
allowing the organ systems to start flushing out. But if it's you're moving toxins and shit around, you want to be able to bind them up and get them out. So you have to make sure that you're taking some binders. You know, we test everything, so I don't like to give things, but it's like a simple one that's almost good for everybody is chlorella. You know, chlorella is a great binder that's pretty much easy. You want that cracked cell wall to be able to actually utilize it well. Um, but you take that and it's an awesome phytonutrient that's also going to be giving the body energy. And I would say, you know, coming when looking at cancers and things, um, dietary aspect, um, fasting is huge. You know, you want to clear out all of the weak cells, all of the shit in the body. Um, and when you do around a 72 hour fast, um, you really hit that good threshold of the body being able to go through if I go cytosis to be able to start cleaning out the system. But as I said, you don't be around people. Yeah. But as I said, like, hours. all of that's working, <laughs> all of that's working on the physical body, which is a great start. Yeah. But the, it's the environment that dictates the expression of the particle. If we're only working on the particle, you're always going to be fighting an uphill battle because that blueprint's still there and it's still creating, you know, your DNA is just a printer. So it's printing what? Amino acids, proteins, the building blocks of every single cell, tissue, and organ in the body. If we don't change the information going to that DNA, then it's going to keep printing out the same, same thing. Mm -hmm. And we're going to be in this, what we think of as a fight. But the fight is there for us to actually gain the awareness that we need to keep going deeper to be able to understand, to change that information mm -hmm. to the printer. Well, if anyone out there is interested in uh, contacting Dr. Nick and Dr. Nicole, you can reach them at integrativeu.health. And uh, hopefully you guys start receiving a bunch of inquiries because I think you guys are fantastic and amazing and the world needs to know more about you guys. So the more we can do to spread the word about what you guys are doing, I think the world would be a much better place. I appreciate that. And we also have the podcast where we hosted you, Integrative You Radio. And, you know, for anyone listening, if you go over to Integrative You Radio, use the little search bar, type in any condition, you know, from diabetes to cancer to uh, brain health, uh, you know, thyroid. Uh, we chances are we have multiple podcasts on that topic. <laughs> So it's definitely a wealth of information. Awesome. And uh, I appreciate your guys' time. Uh, as I'd like to ask my, uh, my guests um, about, you know, after talking about all this stuff, I also like to know what their favorite uh, films are. And so if you guys have a few extra minutes, would love to ask. Yes. Talk to you, especially you, Dr. Nick. <laughs> yes. Curious to hear what you're... We're going to come up with... Uh, I'm actually curious as well. <laughs> okay, good. All right. You guys ready to play? Okay, let's go. Let's go. All right. First the question. hardest questions of today. The only time I've actually been nervous. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, way harder than electron spin. Right. <laughs> so the first question is, what are each of yours favorite movie of all time? Count of Monte Cristo. Okay. <laughs> Who's Glad in that? You. Why? Uh, Jim Caviezel. All right. And it, the movie, I don't, I just, I loved it, but it was all about like perseverance. He literally was locked away for 13 years unfairly. And he, he was able to, he, he learned and he like up leveled himself and then he came back with a vengeance and he, yeah, it, it's just a really, really awesome story. Awesome. Dr. Nick. Gladiator. Me too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. That's yes. Awesome. Yes. Same That's type awesome. of thing. Yep. Perseverance and yeah. I mean, you're on top. You lost it all. It goes. Mm -hmm. I'm always looking at the symbolism of what movies show us as a symbolism of life. Um, and he lost it all. And then, you know, he had that physical fight to get back, but it was more of a mental emotional of you know, do I. Do I even take my own life to get back to my wife and, and son? Do I do I stay disconnected to be able to serve myself with the higher purpose of being able to serve them? And as he learned, as he served himself, um, he changed humanity as well. As a side note, real quick, 
and not to get too deep. But I don't know the name of the actor. No, the question is because you Russell Crowe. Crow. Russell Crowe, right? Yes. Russell yes. Crowe. Uh, He's so proud of himself. <laughs> curious to hear what your because you brought up purpose. Um, do you feel that our existence, that there is a purpose to us being here on this planet? Oh shit! And if so, what is it? Oh yeah. <laughs> Right I, now, I'm trying to figure out the really? quickest way to, to answer this because <laughs> um, that's a deep question. Like, Dr. Nick, your brain's all like this is how my brain is too. Like, <laughs> we, we we got are, another hour at least. <laughs> <laughs> we are creators, but we're also the creation from a higher creator because there's just different levels of awareness. Um, when one looks, and I don't, I don't think that one thing is has all the answers. Um, but the Kabbalah, uh, they teach that everything is different levels of awareness and that every single level of awareness um, is the creator, which has the creation because the, the, the thought process is like when you think about the, the quantum, that black void, it's not a void. The void is just has all the possibilities in it. When you get into the light, the light contains all the information of creation. Like mm -hmm. when you look at studying quantum computers, um, they, they have found that they can store all the information in one photon. However, they're building quantum computers using two to three photons because it's easier to actually transact the energy, the information. When you look at quantum, there is no energy. They, 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 there's like, there's only information. There's no energy. So everything is just an exchange of information. And as you go up in the higher levels of awareness, the only way to gain awareness is by what? losing it. So as a creator, a higher level of awareness, it has to, and I call it it because I don't, it, it's a combination of a balance of feminine and masculine energy. So don't want to label it as a, a woman or a man. Every, every living thing is a balance of energy, which means it has a balance of masculine energy. So I'm just going to call it it. So as it, you know, we would, most people call it God. Um, but I'm not here to offend anybody and everybody has their own belief system. Um, but as the creator above us, we are a single vibration of its consciousness. And our job is to live our job, figuring out higher and higher levels of self love, not the superficial love, but the deep unconditional love. So the best scientific definition I found of love is love is the synthesis and synchronicity of opposites. Hence, when you have that opposite sine wave and it's completely balanced, the happiness equals the sadness. That is the opera singer that hits the pitch that breaks the crystal glass, which shows us that's how homeopathy works. When you have two frequencies, the exact same pitch, but the inverse, it collapses the wavelength, bringing it back into a state of equanimity, back into the balance. There is no polarized energy. We go outside of the duality and are back into the singularity, which is the connection with the one that created us, which is the feeling and sensation of love. Wow. I love this. I'm going to have to go back and listen to all of this. This is so fascinating. Doctor that's, why, that's why we're here, Colin. This is just typical, like, dinner <laughs> time, you know, dinner time conversations. And I'm like, okay. She doesn't let me get that much. <laughs> so how about you, Dr. Nicole? Purpose well, in life. Oh. <laughs> well, there is uh, no competition when it comes to what Dr. Nick just said. Um, I think that the more that I have learned over the past few years is it really comes down to living a life that's in alignment with your values. But it's also about what Dr. Nick said is, is raising your consciousness in, in that time in that life in in that time period it's all about taking every challenge and being able to learn from that challenge learn from your challenges learn from your successes and allow that to increase your consciousness so that you can live in a more balanced state of of love of joy of gratitude and that's really what it comes down to is it's not, it's letting go of, of being perfect. It's letting go of 
it's honestly letting go of a lot of what makes up our 3D reality right now. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes I sit back and it's like you participate on social media, you participate on all the things that you should do. And then sometimes you're like, what am I even doing it all for? Right. <laughs> so, but you went to Italy and I joked, I was like, maybe I should just go pick olives. I don't know, yeah. man. Like, I'm just going to go live on the lands. And <laughs> um, Eileen Leesk is uh, saying she's. She's saying, I could listen to these amazing people forever. And oh, I appreciate I, that. Elizabeth. We'll invite you over for dinner. It gets weird. <laughs> um, all right. So let's move on because I know you guys got to go. Uh, what is your favorite movie from when you were growing up as a kid? Home Alone. Nice. Both of them. <laughs> Mine's weirdly the entire just 007 series. Every single, <laughs> every single Christmas, you know, you'd have the days of Bond. And I just, that was my dad and I would just. I feel like I'm learning about movies. Nick right now. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's like the newlywed show. Yeah. <laughs> All right. What is your favorite romantic comedy or romance movie? Uh, I would probably say How to Lose a Guy in 10 Days. <laughs> I love that movie. <laughs> okay. Dr. Nick. Or do you not watch romantic comedies? I watch some. You romantic love movies. chick flicks. I'm so, like <laughs> weirdly the first thing that came up was like the Count of Monte Cristo. I'm like, was that really romance? I mean, I guess I it know. was. Yeah, I don't there's know. romance in there. I think we watched it that movie a bunch when we were going through like that honeymoon phase of our relationship, um, which why I was thinking it was romance. That'll be my answer. Sure. <laughs> okay. Excellent. And. Uh, What's your favorite straight comedy? Oh, Caddyshack. Okay, beautiful. <laughs> Love it. Yes, definitely. Mine beautiful. is The Heat with Sandra Bullock and Melissa McCarthy. Okay. <laughs> Literally, I die. It's so good. <laughs> Who are you getting beauty to? <laughs> <laughs> Do you own a mirror? <laughs> <laughs> and who is your favorite actor or uh, male character in a movie? For me, it's two, uh, Denzel Washington and Jim Caviezel. Mm -hmm. What makes you attracted to them? Denzel's just like stoic and just was like, oh, you crossed that person or you messed with that grandma over there? Like, that's mm -hmm. fine. I'm just going to ruin your life and probably kill you. <laughs> but in terms of what we find ourselves attracted to, it's generally that the core value about of the person. What would you say is the core value of Denzel that you're attracted to? <clears throat> probably like a level of leadership. Leadership is uh, my top value. Um, but also teaching is my second and I feel like he always plays that mentor mm. to someone younger uh yeah. even if it's in passing or you know so I feel like it embraces probably my top two values yeah I like, like Jim Caviezel because he really um especially like the um Passion of the Christ and his recent movie about trafficking, like he, he goes against the grain for the greater good. Mm -hmm. Love it. Love it. Dr. Nick. I'm glad I was second. I have some time to, to think about this. <laughs> Cause I was like, I don't remember. You gave me the six things to think about. And then I like, I don't remember my answers. Um, Keanu Reeves. I was in nice. like going back. It was just that his, whether it's the the Matrix or the John Wicks or, you know, even back Bill and Ted, uh, it was like he's going against the grain. Um, he was standing up for a level of uniqueness as weird or as dangerous as it may be. Um, he was just being true to himself. Awesome. Love it. Love it. Love it. I like these were <laughs> secretly questions about our core values. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, we, you you can learn a lot about someone with these six questions. My second value is disruptive innovation. Ooh. So disruptive makes a lot of sense. Love it. It's funny when you, as soon as you said that, Dr. Nick, Misty Ballard wrote, I love, he's referring to you. I love his concepts on the matrix and knowledge. 
right when you said Keanu Reeves, she typed that in. Boom. Connection. Synchronicity. Boom. Synchronicity. <laughs> Um, and who's your favorite female actress or actress or female character in a movie? Mine's Sandra Bullock. And I think it's because even in her movies where she's, you know, like more of a badass, she's still goofy. And now going back to my values, one of my values is like a fun loving spirit. So you know, I just, I feel like she always has this playfulness in a lot of the movies that she does. Yep. Love it. Very, yeah. She's very attractive for those reasons. Yeah. Yep. Dr. Nick? I didn't look her name up. And it was not her, but the character that she played in. Um, we just watched it. Like, she loses herself into... Scarlett Johansson? It might be. What movie? It's um, see uh, the movies. It's <laughs> not my forte. Lucy. Yeah. Oh my god, you're literally killing me. Lucy with Scarlett Johansson. Johansson. When she activates 100 percent of her brain. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh, interesting. I'm not. I, I just seen that. Okay. I love that. Oh, you she, haven't seen that? No. How oh. she goes through all the levels of consciousness. Talk about quantum. Um. Yeah. All right. All right, everyone. And this is great, too, because I love to give my audience uh, movie suggestions to watch for the week. So this is great. Guys, you guys are great. Thank you so much. I know we went half hour over time, but... Uh, hey, it was super fun. Yeah, this has been one of my favorite interviews on this show, and I, I truly appreciate your time. And again, everyone, if you guys are interested in reaching out to Dr. Nick and Dr. Nicole, you can reach them at integrativeu.health. And uh, I am definitely going to be reaching out to you guys after this interview. So thank you. Awesome. Thank you so much for having us. We really appreciate it. Bye, thank everyone. You. Take care. All right, everyone. Thank you for joining me for this amazing, incredible conversation. And uh, yeah, I mean, what, what can you say? I mean, I've got like three pages of notes here. Um, but we definitely recommend you guys reaching out to uh, Dr. Nick and Dr. Nicole um, because – as we can tell, you know, with everything that's going on in the world uh, in terms of health and wellness, I think we could all use some support in living healthier and better lives. And uh, I really love what they just are all about in terms of connecting to the deep core values of who we are as a basic foundation for just getting healthier. Um, and if that's something that you are interested in, uh, in exploring and having a space to be able to do that, again, my Inspire course just started. Would love for you to uh, join me on this journey. We've got about 30 people in the class right now, and we're going to be going for the next 90 days. So this is a great opportunity for you to start exploring more about who you are and who you are as these deeper core values uh, in terms of what you are connected to, to your sole purpose. So thank you for joining me. Would love to uh, have you join us for the next episode, whenever that might be. And uh, for the rest of the, the day, I hope you guys... Uh, Go out there into the world and truly connect to your passion and your purpose and uh, go after what really inspires you and what matters most to you guys. Take care for now. I will talk to you guys soon.